Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts takes viewers into archives, museums, and historic sites around the country. The Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture will open a new building on the National Mall in 2015. American History TV traveled with Lonnie Bunch, the museum's founding director, to a storage site in a Washington, D.C. suburb, where he showed us some of the artifacts that will be on display in the new facility. Right now, we're in the storage units of the National Museum of African American History and Culture. In essence, this is the heart of the museum because what's behind me and what we'll see today are many of the objects that are gonna be the soul of this museum. So this is an opportunity to sort of preview some of the material that the public will see when the museum opens its doors. This story of the African American experience is both a story of resiliency uh, and achievement, but it's also a story of struggle. And one of the hard parts of exploring this history is that often the people who were at the worst tended to be other Americans. And so that makes it hard to interpret this because Americans aren't used to being the bad guys. One of the things that's powerful is, is objects like this that convey the sort of strong anti-black sentiment. This is a Ku Klux Klan banner um, from the 1920s. The four Ks would be the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. And as you know, the Klan really began right after the Civil War. It sort of goes underground, um, and then it, it sort of bursts new as a result of the film The Birth of a Nation. And the Klan becomes not a Southern phenomenon, but a national phenomenon in the 20s and 30s. And this kind of banner is the kind of thing that people would sort of use to celebrate their um, investment and their participation in the Ku Klux Klan. So these are the kind of things that we have to make sure we tell the painful stories as well. And then I think that one of the things that is really interesting to me is to recognize that so much of what shapes a community is work. And so we wanted to make sure that we found things that would give people an understanding of the way black America worked. And one of the most important stories, often a story that's not clearly understood, is the story of the Pullman Portage. This is a wonderful hat, and in some ways, um, we've become to a point where Pullman Porters were seen maybe in a stereotypical way as people who only served, um, who actually worked on the railroad to make sort of, you know, the travel of, elite, of the elite white community comfortable. But the Pullman Porters played even a more important role. They were, in some ways, the communicative heart of the African American community. They began to bring to different regions of the country an understanding of what was going on in the South, what was going on in California. And they became one of the earliest black unions. So they were very successful in the early 20th century in unionizing and sort of establishing a pattern that many African American entities and businesses would follow in the future. So for us, the Pullman Porter is both a story of work, it's a story of the limits of what people were able to do because they were African American, but it's also a story of how people transcended the limits of their job and created a way to help the entire community. And then, in some ways, the whole notion of struggling against racism, battling segregation, is really at the heart of trying to understand this story. These two artifacts that we're about to look at speak volumes about segregation. On the one hand, we have what was something that was ubiquitous throughout the 20th century, which were colored drinking fountains, things that were sort of ensured that the separation of the races were enforced. And as we know, that segregation was the law of the land throughout part of the 19th century and all the 20th century. And so colored theaters, colored hotels, colored drinking fountains were part of the way America lived. And what's so fascinating is they're hard to find now. But what really moves me, in addition to things like the colored drinking fountain, is really looking at the depths one went to segregate America. And one of the things that is so powerful is this Lally Kemp, 
which was a charity hospital in Independence, Louisiana. And what I love about this is that this tells you clearly that race matters. When you look at the schedule of actual um, hospital services, that on Monday the colored could go to the, to the gynecologist, um, but on Tuesday that it was whites who could go for pediatrics or internal medicine. And on Wednesday, whites went to their gynecologist or had the dental services. So the notion that we were so rigidly segregated that hours of the day were determined based on the color of your skin, I think this is really one of the most powerful objects we've collected. Um, and this was an object that is not 100 years old. This is an object that really was sort of used from the sort of mid-1950s until Medicare came in, which basically then desegregated many of the hospital facilities. So what we want people to realize is that segregation, while it has long roots, was not that long ago. You can watch this and other American Artifacts programs again at any time by visiting our website, cspan.org slash history. And watch American Artifacts every Sunday at 8 a.m., 7 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern here on C-SPAN 3.